Cockerel doodle do everyone. Welcome back to Tottenham on Tour on this week's show. New England kit. Is it disgraceful? Is it fun? A week of controversy when it comes to Tottenham. Are we reactionary? Are we justified? Tune in here. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Tottenham on Tour for your world-famous morning news show and talking about chats. We're joined by Mr Amir and Mr Ian because we were supposed to be doing reactionary or not reactionary. So we got the most unreactionary person in Amir who's always chill and we got the other side of the thing, which is Ryan Isaacs, who reacts to a bee going somewhere near him over there. And it's the most reactionary person on the planet. But he's not here. He's a flip-flop. And we'll have a conversation anyway. But Amir, how are you this morning, sir? I'm doing all right, Ben. I'm doing all right. I do apologise if I do sound a bit croaky. I'm just getting over some sort of cold. But apart from that, I'm doing all right. Mm. I could actually do, after last night's uh, loss for Israel, I, I could do with a week without football now. So, yeah, yeah I'm all right. Yeah. Mr. Ian, how are you doing this morning, sir? Good morning, guys. Morning all. All good. It's Friday. It's Friday. Oh, it's, it's always better on a Friday than a Monday. Absolutely. Absolutely. To take us through the proceedings of this morning's show, we have Mr. Tony Rodriguez, YouTube member. Good to see you, Tony. Hopefully you're Hello. good, buddy. Hopefully you're good. we got the Belgian Hotspur. Good to see you, Joris. Hopefully you're doing good. Andrew Gregory's in the house, YouTube members all around. We got Fram, YouTube member. Good to see you, Fram. Hopefully you're good. Border da, border da, Colin. Hopefully you're good. We got Kate Rickson. Good to see her. We got Radiant from the Guardians of the Pombo. We got Shem Tang. Good to see you, Shem Tang. Good to see you. Uh, we got Shawnee Slater, another Pombo. Uh, no, David is on the school run and he's got things to do today. So there is no David. So we we have a very non-diverse panel today. It's going to be great. We have Kate Rickson. Good to uh, see you. Good to see you. We have D and B forever. Let's get into the nitty gritty then. England have announced a new shirt with a new redesign of the St George's Cross. What's your thoughts on it, Emir? Is it ridiculous or is it ridiculous? I, I thought it was some kind of joke, to be honest with you. When I saw it, uh, I was like, what's that? Because it doesn't even re resemble the George's Cross, does it? It just yeah. it, it looks like some kind of multicoloured, um, you know, child's... Like, it looks like a plus sign that's been... It's really odd. It's really, really odd. And I don't know what geniuses at Nike or who, the, you know, the marketing team, I don't know who came up with that. But, you know, there's some things you just don't change. And yeah. um, the St. George's Cross is one of them uh, in my eyes. So I hope they revert it back to the old kit very, very quick um, and put the prices down on them. Because, you know, those prices that, that are there for those kits, they're just unaffordable for your average person. Yeah. And I can remember, you know, when I was 16, 17 and, you know, wanting to get an England kit, I could buy a shirt for like 30 odd quid, 35, 40 quid. You would spend in maximum 55 quid on the yeah. entire kit. Yeah. So for me, it's, yeah, it's really shameful. And I, I really hope they, they go back on what they've done. Ian, have you seen the New England kit? Have I you, have. What's your yeah. thoughts on it? The FA are a bit of a joke, aren't they? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, whatever design is Nike put put forward, the FA have got to approve it and sign it off. Yeah. So it says it all, doesn't it? Who you know? do you think is this a Nike design thing? Is this the FA trying to be controversial to get some interest in the shirt? What is up with it? What why would you redesign a country's flag? Why would they think of doing it? I've never seen this. It's probably because we live in a in a country for the spineless uh, people running it, I'm not going to talk about politics. But it's why would you do, why would you even dare redesign a country? I put it on my personal Facebook. 
What you, they wouldn't dare change the United States of America's flag. Why would they change the England flag? I mean, it, it, it's madness, isn't it, Amir? It, it, do you know what? It, the more you think about it, the more bananas it actually is. Um, and I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there, um, Ben, because maybe it is to create controversy. You know, when you create this controversy, things go viral, don't they? It goes over yeah. on Twitter and socials and it goes around the world. So maybe they have done it to create controversy, see what the people think. Um but yeah, I mean, what a waste of money. Um, just, you know, we've got enough problems going on in the world. And, you yeah. know, changing the flag on, on our kit is just, it's just something that shouldn't happen. Um, let's see. Let's see if they, if they change it back. Because I can't see England lining up in Germany with that thing on. Simple yeah. as that. Uh, it's uh, the FIA, the clients are saying, what if the FIA, what if the person, what if Nike are not at fault for this? What if it is uh, the Engl the FA trying to push an agenda? What if it is up to the FIA? Uh, they, someone, they need to be a press release, doesn't there, from the FA to say who's at fault for this? Because when you have everyone from Simon Jordan to over there saying it's stupid, they've got to do something about it, don't they? Who um, knows? Who they've, knows? Lost the, they've lost the plot, the FA. <laughs> when did they ever have it, though, Ian? Well, they, they lost all, all authority when the Premier League came in, which is why you've now got the government uh, bringing in a, you know, controlling regulation now and governance. You know, they're arguing, they're arguing about money going down to the, um, the Football League yeah. and down the pyramid. The FA should be organising and handling that. Yeah. The, FA, the FA are bottled out. You know, they're hopeless. They're pretty hopeless. Mm. Yeah. Let's see what people are saying. Uh, Fran saying it's uh, down to the client. Um, James is saying it's nice. It's a shame because it's a nice kit. It is quite a nice shirt, but it, it's just stupid. It's stupid. DMB, everyone is now talking about it. what it is. It's great advertising. Uh, bad advertising is good advertising. Uh, we've got Sparrow's in the building. Uh, the sheriff is saying Nike kits are rubbish anyway. I wouldn't say they're rubbish. They're just cookie cutter. They're just cookie cutter. They're all very similar. Um, um, the Belgian hotspur say Nike are idiots. They made it affordable. The whole country would buy one. Surely they'd make more money and best advertising ever with. I love the new Belgian kit. I love the new Belgian kit because it's... Um, it's um, inspired of off of Urge's Tintin and I love Tintin Tintin comics. So that that is, that is really like using history to design a kit and it's fantastic. The the new if you've not seen the new Belgian away shirt with the blue and the brown, it's fantastic. Uh Benjamin Foster is saying it's mostly Nike. Uh DJ is saying the FA signed off of it uh, signed it off clearly. They are mental. It must be something. We've got shoe boys in the house. The answer is changed from Chase and status. Um, we'll talk about we'll talk about the price of the kit. One hundred and twenty-five pounds for just for the shirt. Is the what has the world gone mental? This isn't Louis Vuitton. This isn't Ted Baker. This isn't Paul Smith. This isn't a designer brand. And you would know this as well, Ian. When you're the perfect person to have on this. We can finally got a fashion question and something to do with fabric. <laughs> Why is it £125? It's not possible. It's pure profiteering. Yeah. That's all it is. It, like, cause can you explain the pricing of the kit? Because you can talk about this because you, you deal in fabrics. The, these kits are made. I don't know where the kits are made. Are they, are they made in China or Thailand? They're made in the Far East. Whether they're made in a factory in the Far East. Well, I was I was selling fabric for a guy from Taiwan, yeah. who sold for a small period of time. Who sold sportswear, and yeah. he sold. Funny enough, for the England shirt for twenty ten in South Africa, he sold fabric for the sleeve and the back of the shirts. Yeah, and another company because of the heat that there was a different type of fabric. To let to let the um, the fabric breathe, um, and they did the other. They did the fronts. So where it's produced, I don't know. Um, but it's interesting because um, my wife was in the business. She went into a factory in Turkey a few years ago, mm. yeah. and uh, they were they were doing cheap leggings for her, 
um, yeah. in the same factory as as a Paul Smith and yeah. all the brands. So cool. that, that's what goes on. It's, well, it's, you, pay, you do cool. pay for a name. You pay for the quality, but you mostly pay for the name that's on that's designed it. Yes, but right. Nike is not a designer brand. They might think they are. They're a sports no, they brand. No, 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 it's a sport. It's a sportswear brand. It's and, a sportswear uh, brand. They shouldn't be designing. It's, it's it's they've all gone mad. All of them. You know, they it used it used to be it used to be that a new kit would come out every two or three years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now you've got now you've got club kits coming out every year. You've got three kits. Yeah coming out i mean it's, it's it's unfair on parents you know kids kids want the new kids yeah and and they're and they're priced very very high you know spurs, spurs are selling kids first team shirt i mean i i bought one i bought a shirt for my great niece yeah. who was who was in danger of being taken down to arsenal so we had to move quickly when oh God. yeah well, uh, you did the right thing and you did the right and, thing and um yeah the, the shirt's there for for a nine-year-old girl First team shirt, I suppose, is sixty quid. It's unbelievable, it's isn't it? And, and for women, and for women, it's eighty. Yeah. So you know, you're talking about one hundred and twenty-five. You're not talking about that much more for international shirts. Yeah. It's it's madness. I remember, I remember going on a on a on a trip to the Bernabeu, yeah. did a, but my football team did a did a end of season trip to Madrid, and we did the stadium tour. And I'm this is going back now. Cool, must be twelve years, and shirts there were like one hundred and thirty euros. Yeah, at the time. You know, I remember. So I remember buying a Paris Saint Germain shirt because I absolutely loved David Beckham growing up. So the moment he got into yeah. European football again, I had to mm -hmm. buy a David Beckham shirt because he was still my hero at that point. Um, sure. It was a hundred euros, and that was like it's big, pure. It's big, just. Big pure it's just an abuse of brand loyalty yeah it is it is and you know th this is the one thing that bothers me right like football it's the most accessible sport in the world because all you need is a patch of grass and a ball to play and a couple right? of jumpers yeah and a couple of jumpers and for me that's the joy of the game you know i can remember being on a little island in indonesia and playing with locals and the kids and you know it's just a wonderful thing that brings people together you know as soon as you step out in a foreign country and you say oh i'm from london oh which team do you support you know where and, and it's and it's one of these things that connects people so to just profiteer off it the way they're doing to me it's it's scandalous and i do kind of think though that customers you know, we, we do have a say in these prices, right? If you boycott and you don't buy, guess what? The price will go down. Yeah. Um, but that's that's up to, you know, the consumer base to, to come together and do those kind of things, which I, I can't really see happening at, at this stage. But, you know, that's, that's what should happen in my eyes with this England kit. You know, if they're charging 130 quid, come together, nobody buy it, you'll see the price drop. Yeah. The problem is kids kids rule the roost that these shirts are not for adults. They they are they are the a kid is gonna say, Oh my mate's got it, I want it. And that's what starts. And and then the, the the parents gonna take their kid to whatever it is, JD Sports or a Nike shop or a sports direct uh, sports direct UK's number one, da 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 da. Um, I mean I can only think that you know we're coming into the Euros, so they're looking to to maximise yeah. mm. earnings. I mean, it'd be interesting to know what England football shirts are normally priced at in the shops. Yeah. So if anybody knows who's who's watching, if they can send a message through, I've got no idea. You know, how much more than 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 the regular shirt is this costing? Uh, I nearly bought an inter shirt with Eto on the back at the San Siro, but they didn't have it in my size. That that's a great kit to have. That's a, that's a class kit to the have. The classic yeah. one, the Irelli. Um, the Irelli. Um, David H is saying, "Who really cares about the England kit? It, it, it affects everyone. Da it affects everyone, David, because soon the Tottenham shirt will be a hundred and thirty quid, and it will only go up. It will only go up because." There is a demand for Tottenham shirts. Whilst whilst we absolutely adore Sonny, whilst he is at the club, the price of those shirts is going to go up because there's always going to be the demand for a Sonny and Min shirt. That is the most sold shirt. They could have an entire store at Tottenham just for Sonny and Min shirts and just for Sonny and Min 
and that's fantastic but it's just gonna it's gonna cause it i, I can charge 200 pounds for a football shirt because i know someone's gonna buy it that they, they, they are they're pushing the boundary every single year they're putting it up by five pound here five pound there five pound here five pound there ben they'll reach a ceiling soon gen just generally with football fans it'll reach a ceiling and and you'll have unfortunately you'll have the grassroots that uh, you know you'll have basic football basic people normal working class people will just get priced out yeah it's appalling because it's 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 a working class game so uh, it's not that anymore though is it in well, it should be and it's part it's part of the reason for this current week we'll go back on to tottenham this has been a week of utter controversy in terms of the fan base fans are it's fan warfare isn't it it's the the ultra pessimistic versus the ultra optimistic it's those two at it again because there is no unite in the tottenham hotspur fan base it's the people on the more tottenham on tour side of the fence who are very pessimistic about the way the club is going they don't like the way is they don't like the way the football club is run they will never like the way the football club is run but they're happy to sit, sit through the process of the team because they love the manager. They want the manager to do well. They know it's not the manager's fault. But then you get then you get a load of bad news in one week, culminating in an embarrassing loss. Are Tottenham fans overreactionary? We'll start with you, Amir. Are, are Tottenham fans overreactionary? Or is this, in my opinion, the little stones that start an avalanche? If, if we'd have lost four nil, three nil to Fulham two months ago, <coughs> would care. They'll be like, "Okay, this is a bump in the road." Yada yada yada. This happens. But yeah. because we've had prices go up by six percent, getting rid of the old age pensioners, ticket price, uh, the concessions, doing this, a trip to Australia for one game. It's all all this stuff, and then three nil loss. It's that entire avalanche. Well, I would say, Ben, you know, what they've done is scandalous in terms of what they've done to the, the senior citizens, the money going up. This pre, like pre preseason tour, whatever it is, to Australia, also, like, you know, there's enough games in the calendar. You're seeing players go down like flies. Why, why fly them halfway across the world to go play some friendly? I, I, I just don't understand it. It's pure profiteering, it's greed um and yeah it, it boils my blood especially you know to the older fans that are out there that, that have been supporting this club week in week out and been going to the games and you know they were regulars at the old white heart lane for for that to be done to me such a slap in the face you know it yeah. really it really is because our club can make money in many many different ways right we have so many revenue streams why do that to them it it, it doesn't make any sense to me now, when it comes down to, you know, being pessimistic or being optimistic, I think there is a bit of a disconnect within the fan base, right? Because we had such a great start to the season under Ange and we were playing amazing football and we were winning games, right? Our expectations went from there to sky high. And sometimes it's, it's, it's not so realistic, right? We were never going to win the league. In, in October or whenever it was, it, is, it wasn't going to happen. But where we are under Ange, in actual fact, you know, I think we're, we're roughly where we should be. Yes, Fulham was a kick in the teeth. It was yeah. a kick in the teeth, right? A big kick in the teeth. But here's the thing. If you go back and watch that game, we had chance after chance. If you're clinical, you get back in that game and you got a shot at maybe nicking a point or even getting the three points. Our, our issue is that for me anyway, that the players don't quite yet know how to play the and way week in, week out. And when we have changes, players coming in, players coming out, that don't quite know the system. It just, it just doesn't work. Um, so for me, we're roughly where we should be. You know, if we get a Champions League spot on, in Ange's first season, that's fantastic. That's an achievement. I know he doesn't think it is, right? Yeah. But it is, nonetheless. Any self-respecting manager shouldn't think that's an achievement. 
No, it. The thing is, it's an achievement in the sense that he's it's got us little, back into Europe. Achievement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not bringing trophies. It's not. It, yeah. You know, it's not glory. No, no, far from it. But it's it's a step in the right direction, right? So I can see that that on the footballing side, we are making some improvements. Um, you know, part of the issue as well is that Spurs fans are probably the most patient in the league, right? We've been waiting what. 15 odd years now for a trophy. Oh, that's a controversial thing. You said the Spurs fans are the most patient in the league. Well, no, I think so. <laughs> I think so, Ben. I think so. How many more managers can we go through? How many yeah. more? How many more players that aren't good enough can we go through? How yeah. many more years of Levy can we go through without winning anything? So I do think there's actual there's patience in this fan base. Um, but obviously you do get the reactionary fans that you know as soon as as soon as we oh, have Ryan! A... Oh, so, oh, sorry Ryan um yeah uh, uh, yeah that just came out yeah uh, but... I don't know what that was don't know what that uh, was but, yeah but yeah you know you're always going to get it after a loss after a poor performance after something stupid that a player's done like the sumo diving you know back yeah. in, like, you are going to get reactions and and that's fine that's part of it you know I get I get really frustrated um if players do something stupid. Look, for example, Israel last night, red card for no reason in our own half. Absolutely idiotic. Of course, I'm going to get upset by that. You know, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I just think that you do need to keep a little bit of a level head when it comes to Ange, because it is so yeah. it is so new, it is so fresh. It's a different way of playing football, a lot yeah. better way of playing football, let's be honest, to the past yeah. three, four years. So we do need to show a bit of patience, um, I think. But we're well within our right to demand success. That's what the that's what football is well, about. Not even demand success, Amir. Demand that we compete for success because of yeah. the prices we pay. People say I'm an idiot for comparing Tottenham Hotspur to a restaurant because of outside features. I will come to you on this in. If I'm paying the highest prices in the league, the highest price for this, the highest price for that, I should demand quality, right? We, we ought to be competing for the best players with the prices we're paying. Yeah. It's, it's as simple as that. But they're not interested. We, everybody knows. I'm not everybody, but my, I think most people have woken up to the fact that Enoch are just in it to make a profit. Yeah. Not interested. They're just not interested in trophies. I mean, what Ange came back came out with the other week was staggering. You know, we would never spend a hundred million on a player. Well, you know, if if a an actually top top player came up and he and he's going to be the icing on the cake like rice could well could well be for arsenal this season mm. you know it's, it's you know you pay market prices um we why, can't, why can't i compare this to a restaurant nick if i go to gordon ramsay and pay 60 pound on a steak that steak's going to be quality it's got to be, I, absolutely you've got to pay for quality That's right. if you're you know, paying the highest prices you deserve quality we're nowhere near a trophy, <clears throat> nowhere near, and, and the ticket prices have gone up six percent. And, uh, and even, the assault on the senior citizens is just disgraceful. You pay but the highest prices in the league, sense. and there's not even soap in the toilets, Ian. There's not even soap in the toilets. There's not even soap in the toilets. Nothing works. There's cold water. If you're paying that prices, at least get the little things right. Well, there's a new Ben, there's a new fan liaison officer who joined a couple of months ago. Give him a shout. Yeah. Get him, get him on the case. Get the soap in the toilet. To. Hey, we we need to. clean hands. I'd rather have players on the pitch, to be honest, but I get your point. Well, I can't get the, if they can't get the little things right, the little, the little details of yeah. what makes – they can't get the big details right. Ben, any, any top business, the, the drive, tenacity um, – Everything comes from the top. We don't have it. We are rudderless. Yeah. There is no leadership as far as football is concerned. There is no drive, no dynamism, no tenacity yeah. from our owners because they're not interested. It's, it's, it's a secondary thought. If they spend just enough to keep us competitive, keep the fans coming through the door, and yes, you know, the fans are superb. Fans are terrific. There's 61,000 sellouts every single match. Yep. Yeah. And we are nowhere near a trophy. Yeah. We don't have we don't have the top top players that other clubs have got. 
now that Kane's gone. I'm sorry, it's 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 just a, a piss poor situation. But in, in terms of being reactionary, you know, it's the team played badly last week. They played brilliantly the second half the week before at Villa. They yeah, two contrasting results. That happens in football. My, you know, you win, you win games, you lose games. I didn't expect anything. I keep saying, I, hopefully, we get sixth place for me. That's a good season, and it still is. And when you look at Newcastle, Liverpool, Chelsea, West Ham, still to travel to, and Arsenal, yeah. Man City to come at home, you've got six out of the last ten, which are going to be difficult, very, very difficult games. So you know, I fifth place w- would be quite an effort, quite you know, at, at this stage. Um, Levy won't pay for quality, you're quite right. Um, experience is driven by the quality, isn't it? Um, Nick is saying we're paying for an experience, not the quality. But if you're paying for a bad experience, it's not good, is it? No, but listen, the, food, the food's not great. It's not, it's not particularly good. You know, for what, for what you pay for at a football stadium, the food's not great. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the players are interesting. We, we've got a... We've got a, a good bunch of players now, you know, much better than last season. Take Kane out, you look at the other 10, and and the other 10 are on a much different level to last year. And we're still getting battered by teams like Brighton and Fulham. So something's wrong. You know, moving on, moving on to the football side, the first 10 games escalated expectation out of all control. You know, fans weren't realistic. Mm. We took teams by surprise. We had a lot of luck going as well. Everything went with us. Um, and, you know, we're, we're now back to where, you know, we've hardly played well for two, you know, for several months. So people turn around and say, oh, Angeball. What is Angeball? What's Angeball? Leaving, leaving the, the defenders so isolated that Van der Ven's getting hamstring on injury after hamstring injury because of the amount of sprints he's having to do. I mean, this 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 style of football will kill Van der Ven. Yeah, it's a joke. You know, the style of football we are getting absolutely obliterated down the wings every single game. All clubs know how to play us now. Yeah, and the manager, as I said on Monday, stands there and does nothing. Sits, stands in a coma. Doesn't know how to change. Doesn't know how to change things. Didn't know how to claw back. You know. Um, Claw back momentum in the uh, in, in the match last Saturday, so it, it was it was a pretty pretty poor week, you know, with the season ticket increase, then OAPs, then Fulham. It was a poor week. Yeah. You know, in terms of the end of season tour, you know, I'd like to be earning tens of thousands of pounds worth a week and go to Australia for two or three days to play a game of football. You know, in my twenties, fantastic. You you know, you're super fit. You're at the peak of your powers. It's not such a bad deal. You go away for a few days, do me a favour. I'd love that. Better than getting up at five o'clock, dealing with the Far East every single morning like I do. I've got to tell you something. So there's, for me, they go, they go to Australia. Would have been better to gone, to gone pre-season when they're going to Korea because Australia is much closer to Korea than it is I to mean, the UK. They so, built in Australia. Geographically, geographically, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Do Korea, do Australia. I understand that geographically, but to go there and come back for one game is strange. It's, it's strange. ridiculous. But, Ian, Ian, as someone who's been out there, you know, it's a long old haul to get out there. It takes something out of you, you know, there and back. These and players, they're going to be knackered. A couple of days, they'll be fine. They, they're, they're fit. They're, they're not like you and me. They're fit. How fit are they? They're always bloody injured. Yeah, exactly, Ian. <laughs> they're always injured. Come on, to go to Australia for, to play a game of football. It reminds me of what my dad did if got flying to Australia for one day for a wedding and then flying back the next day. I you know, don't envy him at all. What, <laughs> what a job playing football for a living. I mean, Indeed. It's tough, isn't it, eh? I mean, all this this whole hoo-ha about going to Australia. Sorry, I don't understand it. Who cares? So what? It's 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 the they play, they play a game, they come back. Now, isn't it, Ian? It's the contradiction of we always do the net zero this with a net zero football club. Our lights are are pers- are purposely designed to be good for the environment. This is the best for the environment in the country. Net zero this, net zero that, net zero toilets. Keep uh, saving water this, <laughs> saving water that, and then they fly to Australia for a day. 
Ben, well, let's ban aeroplanes and go back 100 years in time then. No, it's not you have aeroplanes. It's they're flying there for one game. Okay. All right. They're obviously being well paid. I, I, I just think it's ridiculous. Go out, if you're going to Australia, go out there, play six or seven games against local teams. Well, no, Newcastle are playing too while they're out there. They're playing us, then they're playing. They're playing again uh, three days later. It is just uh, stupid. You know, you've got Trippier and Pope, who, who may well be with England. Mm. So... You know, Madison as well for England. You know, it's I like this comment from Benjamin Foster. How about stay in the UK, back the manager, get the signings in early? It's what I'd like them to do. That's too obvious though, isn't it? Benjamin? It's never gonna happen. <laughs> uh we've got Phil P's in the house. Good to see you, Phil P. Yeah. We got they won't be in, being in cattle class, sure. it won't it's not the even if you're being first class, it's still horrific. That's ben, still a horrific flyer. Ben, it's not horrific. They it's not horrific. Bad. There's shit going around in the world that's horrific. This is not horrific. It's in it's context. Just, it's it's no, not it's, to be on a pl it's, plane for 24 hours. It's these not are fit 20 year old footballers getting on a plane in first class, traveling 24 hours, getting off, leave it a couple of days, play a game of football, get on the plane, come home. I can think of far worse stuff that, that, that goes oh, on. Oh, there. there's a lot of worse things out there, Ian. That's for sure, right? A hundred percent. I agree with you. I have, to, I have to disagree with you guys on, on, on this. That's the point of this show. We're not having people on that all think the same way. We're not singing off the, the the same hen sheet. But that is the point of this show. But it's it's ridiculous. What I want everyone to vote in the chat, actually. Is it a good idea? Or is it a bad idea? Yes or no? Just one word. Is it a good idea? Yes or no? And we'll see what the people in the chat say. Let's see what, let's let's put it up to our chat. Um, uh, you can't tie the poor millionaire players. It's, 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 I, I it's get like it. It's like a bit of sarcasm there. It's great. <laughs> um, NHL fly a lot more miles than football and they don't, Mo, but it's That's because Canada and America are huge though, right? Yeah. They've got to fly. Um, Aussie teams, uh, Aussie care teams should give back. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, the flight takes more of a toll on the body than the game itself. It probably does. It does. It does. I'm telling you, as someone who's who's done these long haul flights, you come out of there shattered. You come off the plane. I know they're in first class. I'm not in first class, right? There is a difference there, but you still you still come out pretty bloody tired off them. You know, long haul flights. Uh, Newcastle need it because of PR. Uh, we, uh, we don't need the money. We, we don't need the money. I never said uh, I can see both sides. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, we got Joris is saying no, it's a bad idea. Phil P is just saying mid. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the answer, Phil P. Um, we got Barbaric Disdain saying no. Kate Rickson saying. Why are you saying it's a good idea, uh, David? He's just being contra contrary because he said it was bad the other day, flip flop. <laughs> uh, Alex is saying yes. DMB is saying no. Um, Nick is saying financially yes, ethically no. Personally, who cares? <laughs> is there anyone listening to this this podcast who wouldn't like to go to go to Australia, play a game of football, and take a hundred grand a week? Ask that. Let's let's ask that question to everybody. I mean, I would do it because I want the money. Yeah, sign me up. Sign me up. I'll go. I hate the flight though. I, I wouldn't be able to play ninety minutes after being on that flight. I'd be dead. I think. I think I could. I think I could live with a flight like that if I'm only a hundred grand a week. Yeah, me too, Ian. I'll be. I'll be up there with, next to you. <laughs> Phil, I'm on loan to Manchester City with Lee Gunner, who charge half the price of Spurs and get to see Wonder Goals and Trophy for half the price of Spurs. I mean, it's, it's this is always going to be the argument. And then you're going to say, oh, but they're run by a state. They can keep the prices low. It's what is a poorer area? Is Moss Side or Tottenham a poorer area? Manchester City's prices are to reflect the area that Manchester City are in, which is not a great area. Or is it because they're run by a, a bigger juggernaut? What is it in? Is it because of the area or is it because of the owners? No, I think that London prices, 
London's more is is viewed on as being more affluent than other cities in London, in, in England. Yep. And there is like a London tax. Yep. Everything's like, you know, people people will pay London waiting allowance yeah. with their wages. Why? Because London's that much more expensive than you know than the rest of the country. And and the same goes same goes for theatre tickets, concert tickets, football tickets. It's it's the same. No Does there need to be a regulatory body to to for the football to the prices of everything, Ian, in terms of football tickets? Does there well, need to be a board that regulates it? I think I think there's there's definitely a conversation there to have with the regulator. I think I think the cap on thirty pound for away games in the Premier League is very good and should be kept. Definitely, yeah. that's, I think that's excellent. Um, and for for home games. It's difficult, but I think there has to be a conversation where where the greed stops. I mean, you know, you've got Fulham asking three grand for tickets in the new in the new stand. Yeah, you know, which, which more, more the Spurs, which, more, more the Spurs are doing for non corporate non corporate season tickets because I think our most expensive one next year is just over twenty three hundred. Mm. So, and and you know, how many people are going to how many people are going to pay three grand? I can, un- I can slightly understand it, but it's still a disgrace because it's a smaller stadium. Because it's a smaller stadium, there's going to be less of those premium seats available. But Fulham charging the most. Fulham. Uh-huh. It's a joke. Perfect. Surely the price should be linked to the, the size of the football club. Because let's face it, apart from Fulham actually battering us on our football field, Fulham are a tiny football club. Well, they're much they're much smaller than Spurs in terms of in, in everything history tradition. Yeah. The only you know, thing like, that's different is in their Putney, and Putney's lovely. What, what's your thoughts on this, Amir? Look, uh, I, I just think the the prices and the football just become ridiculous. Uh, in, in all honesty, and for people wanting to take uh, the family, their kids, the nieces, the nephews down to the game, it's sad what I'm going to say, right? But go take him to the National League or League Two. You know, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna actually um, get some proper proper football. Big yeah. update. You're gonna get some proper proper football, some proper proper action, some really passionate fans, um, and it and it's affordable. The Prem has just become, you know, basically a cash cow. Yeah, people are just gonna milk, 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 milk until you know the cows come home and it's and it's it's just it's sad for me it's sad for me to see i remember you know i back in the day when we were in the europa league at white hart lane you could get tickets for like 10 15 quid they were uh, giving them out they were literally yeah. giving them to people yeah and that was fantastic you know you could say to your nephew to your niece to your your son your daughter come along there you know got a bit of spare cash for you come along to the match enjoy a european night of football um so yeah i just think it's greed you know, if we had a chairman who wasn't so focused on profit, then maybe you'd have a Bayern Munich situation where it's, you know, it's a huge club, but the the tickets are priced fairly. Um, yeah. It, it, it really does frustrate me. And unfortunately, I can't see it getting any better. Um, sorry David, to be what's your, Welcome to the show, David. What's your thoughts on the conversation at hand? I pretty much agree with what everyone's saying, really. It's it's getting to the point where a lot of fans are going to be completely outpriced on everything. I mean, from shirt sales to tickets to travel to everything. I mean, wages are not going up. For a normal person, wages are not really going up enough to compensate for any offset like that. And it's getting to the point where, <clears throat> yeah, you're going to see a lot of proper true fans just staying at home. Same as like, you know what I mean? Like people used to go out on the weekend and stuff like that. Less people are doing that. Yeah. I know towns around near me. I know I'm in a little town in Wales, like, but towns near me where they used to be rife full of people on the weekend. Now we're empty. A handful of people going out and everything. And it's going to be the same with football. For me, anyway. For the lower class and that like lower middle class people, they're not going to be able to afford all the travel or all the things like that. And yeah. this trip to Australia, I know I put yes in the comments. I was just being a muppet. But, You're uh, always being a muppet, though, <laughs> baby. 
I, I know that. you too well by now, David. I've, sh I've shared a screen with you too much to know. Yeah. Your wife. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, I can see why they're doing it. I can understand why. Just promoting themselves, you know what I mean? More fans, get more revenue in. It's a business at the end of the day. That's what football is now. It's a business. So you don't care about anyone else. From a footballer's point of view and a fan's point of view, how many fans from around there are going to be able to fly over Australia for one day? Hardly anyone. Exactly. So it's going to be... It's, I know they want to get Australian fans there and try and build up a fan base there. But like you said previously, do it over a number of games. Not just one. Yeah. You know, play... Like, I think, Ian, didn't you say play a couple of the um, local teams? No, I said it. Oh, that I was it, it, yeah. Play a couple of local teams. Give them something to, you know what I mean? I think, I think, David, I think they it should have been done when they when they go to Korea in July. That was that would have been perfect geographically. Um, yeah. It's not we're not playing there so English fans can go across and watch it. It's there for the it's there to boost the fan base in Australia, pure and simple. Oh, of course, but you also want them type of fans there as well, wouldn't you? If it was a long pre-season, at least three or four games there, a lot of English fans would go over there as well, and they'd be able to mingle with our side of the fans type of thing like that. That's what you really want, won't you? To promote a thing. You want both sets of fans coming together. Yeah. For me, anyway, that's how I should see it in a sense. Listen, if, if, if you're doing a pre-season tour and it's over over a week or two, then yes, I would expect fans maybe to, to a percentage, a small percentage of fans yeah. from here to go across and, and, and watch it. For one game, I don't think they're even considering English fans going across. It's, it's no. purely, to, it's purely to build the, um, to build the, uh, the brand. Melbourne in Australia. Melbourne's a big you know, city. You've got, you got Mum and Poster Coglu there, who are Aussies going across. That's that's what it's all about. But Ian, Ian, here's the thing, right? Why do it at the end of the season? Why not just add it on to the? Well, as I said, it should have been done pre-season. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the fact they're going out there is is purely it's just a money thing, isn't it? You know, Newcastle are out there. They're probably the organisers have probably thought to themselves, who are two attractive teams? You know, we can bring across. Um, who knows? Maybe they've spoken to United City, Liverpool, who have all said no. Mm. Well, we don't they're, know. All, they're all going for trophies. The, the FA Cup is the is the end of the week of that. That's game. right. Correct. And obviously, we're not going to Australia. We we, we want to be in the FA Cup final, Liverpool so, Cup now because we got beat by Man right. United. So all you know, so the United City Liverpool Arsenal. I think they didn't choose we'll Liverpool. Have, we'll Liverpool, have, we'll Liverpool, have have Liverpool have a massive fan base in Australia, and they don't want to see that Ange is the small, smaller fan base. They want to take a team with a smaller fan base to show <clears> them as <throat> a big fan base in Australia. I think that's what their plan is because teams like United, Liverpool, bigger teams, actual big teams, because we're not a big club, we're a rich club. Have a loads of fans yet all over the world. We're, we're still getting, we're still a fledgling. We're, we don't win anything. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Well, well, this is this is where Levy misses the biggest trick, right? He's such a donut because if you actually went and won trophies, that's going to do more for the fan base than any flight to Australia or Korea yeah. or wherever else. And you know, let's not forget yeah. what. He, <clears throat> what he did to Jose, sacked him before a final because of his ego. So, no, because he wanted top four. He sacked Jose because Jose was going to rest players two days later on the Wednesday night against Southampton before the City League Cup final. Yeah, yeah. And Lee, and Lee said, no, I want top four. But why bring an elite manager in if you're going to make those decisions? That's wrong. That's yeah. simply wrong. He's a fool. He's a yeah. fool. That's what he does. We've seen it numerous yeah. times with him. He, he, he always thinks about the money, but we don't David, need that cool, money now. It's like Jesse J, isn't it, um, David? It's Jesse J. It's your fellow yeah. Welshman. It's all about the money. All about the money. <laughs> all about the money. David, David is uh, Tottenham on tours. Jesse J confirmed. I would love to think it, Phil. I would love to think it, but big clubs win trophies and we don't. That's right. That's right. The thing is, when we're talking about this, sorry, when we're talking about this and you want to bring fans into it, right? You've got Sonny, yeah, who brings in a massive fan base yeah. from Korea, right? Yeah. An incredible fan base from Korea. 
they were absolutely awesome. I've watched some of the YouTube videos and everything. They were a mental bunch, and I love yeah. it. Yeah. But you imagine Sonny lifting a trophy. How many more that would bring in? Oh. You know, it's them images, them type of things that the Korean scene of, and that you bring more. And then you add all the other players who you can bring in who are going to bring more fans. You've got Kulu from Sweden, right? Well, now they, we're just signing Bergval. David, 70% of all football fans in South Korea follow Spurs. So yeah. you've virtually maxed out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you get what I'm trying to say, though. You add, you add that image of trophies to other players within the team. You bring in more of their fans from their country. Yeah. To get what That's I mean, not, not rather than just us challenging for top four. It's it's the, it's the historical aspect. Whenever I speak to an older fan, why did you start supporting Tottenham? It's always the big players that won trophies. Yeah, they don't. They and this current generation of fans has had the wall pulled over their eyes. Oh, we've got a wonderful stadium, we've got a lovely kit, we've got lovely this, we've got lovely that. If I speak to an older fan like my uncle. I supported Pat. Uh, I supported Tottenham because I loved Pat Jennings. I loved Mickey Hazard. I loved Glenn Hoddle, Gascoigne, um, Hoddles, Waddles, all big players that won trophies. Ardiles. Yeah, when Ardiles. We're now moving away from that and say, so, oh, but trophies don't matter because only only the big teams win trophies. The clubs that spend the most money win trophies. But so why have we pivoted from that point of view? Winning and seeing your team say, oh. I started supporting Tottenham after we beat Chelsea in the 1967 FA Cup final. That's when I started supporting Tottenham. Because they watched that. When seeing teams win, they want a bit of that glory. They want to be in that number, in, in, if you pardon the pun. Oh, that, that's what Spurs sing it every week. When the Spurs go marching in, I want to be in that number. I yeah, mean, but it's, it's the old saying, isn't it, Ben? You know, you look at some of the past quotes we've had. The likes of Bill Nichols and stuff yeah. like that, right? They meant something to the fans because that's what Tottenham were about. We've lost our way over the years. Yeah. And that is because of the likes of Enoch and Levy. It really is. They came in and made a business, right? We have a fantastic stadium. Great, wonderful. Now give us something for that stadium. Give us something for the fans who have waited year after year, watched Ross year after year. Give them something now to be proud of. You cannot be proud of a stadium because other teams are going to build better ones now. So now we should be in a position where we push forward and get the, the result from this. Get the result from year after year of watching the dramas, watching the dross, going through the stress and agony of being close to things and missing out. Get us there now. Get us to that final. Get us to win a trophy so we can all be proud of what we've yeah. waited for. Yeah. And but on a lighter note, David, how did Wales do yesterday? Wonderful, mate. <laughs> Battered the Finland yeah. lot. Loved it. Sorry. Oh, it was a cracking game, mate. Absolutely loved it. Sorry, uh, I thought you were, I thought you were gonna ask David about the Italy match Nick, last Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> what Italy uh, match? Sorry? What Italy match? Sorry, Colin, as well. He's talking about the rugby. He's forgotten. Oh, He's forgotten. Oh, I don't watch the rugby anymore, mate. No. No, no, I don't watch the rugby anymore. I don't follow it. <laughs> Used to play it. I'm not doing it anymore. Yippee! But yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a cracking game. Uh, we yeah. were solid. We were great. Watching the Spurs boys. Bren Johnson on the score sheet. Got in a good position. Wonderful goal. David Brooks, everything that lad's gone through, wow, you know what I mean? From nearly dying to be on that pitch, doing what he's doing, fantastic from him. And overall, it was a cracking game. We've got a big game against Poland now to get into the final to qualify. So that's Tuesday. But yeah, overall, it was great. Ben Davis nearly scored, but VAR, as always, has to ruin it. And, and Rodon against Lewandowski. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Easy, mate. Easy for Rodon. He's been doing bits. Like, <laughs> oh. Fair play to him. He's found a team. For me, Rodon's fan. I love Rodon. Um, and he's found a team that he's comfortable with now. I hope Leeds buy him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he'll he'll work at Spurs now. So definitely not the amount of loans he's gone out on and stuff like that. But yeah, Rodon to Leeds, I think, will happen in the summer. I think we're going to sell him for like about, what, 12 million, 15 million, something like that. Leeds should buy him because he's been yeah. doing absolutely amazing for them. And yeah, Dan James did a hell of a well, really well. I've slated this him a lot a for a while. I'd like to ask actually, because I actually quite wanted Dan James when we were linked with him. I I, I was actually relatively happy with Dan James. Dan. And 
Sorry. It's Dan James or Timo Werner. Both as... Oh, yeah, I take James over Werner. Uh, I want uh, everyone in the comments. <laughs> Who would you rather have, Dan James or Timo Werner? Oh, for me, yeah. I'd take Dan James, but I'd rather have like someone better. Do you know what I mean? Of I've course, slated Dan James for Wales. That's the player we're buying, David. We're getting yeah. that mid player. Who yeah, would but you no. rather have it in, Dan James or Timo Werner? Dan James or Timo Werner? I think I'd rather have Raphael Leal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have Kvicha. <laughs> Everyone in the uh, comments ask, 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 answer this question. Bring I back, bring back Gary. Get, get Bale out of retirement. <laughs> get Bale back out of retirement. Did anyone see? Did anyone see Bale knocked in his first hole in one in golf? He ain't coming back to football. You're going to see him on the PGA. You're going to see him on the PGA in a few years. Yeah. Big, biggest shame that he, he he was playing for Spurs when COVID was on. What a what a shame for the fans. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. That that broke my heart. That did because Bale Bale was my hero when I was in that sort of that 2008 era, and I didn't get to say goodbye to him fully. No. Really annoying. Really annoying. Well, Amir, we we were behind the, we were behind the other goal when when he yeah. scored that uh, fabulous shot. West Ham. Um, no, at Stoke. Oh, the volley over his left shoulder, and he the hits volley. it. Oh, Fab, what a goal. Thing of beauty. What a player. What a Timo player. Werner. And he's Welsh. Dan James Amir. Dan James or Timo Werner. <laughs> I'm going to be controversial here and I'm going to go with Werner. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I tell you what. I just think that if that guy, because when he does take on his man, people do find it very difficult to know which way he's going, left or right. And I think if he can improve his finishing a little bit, you know, and not miss sitters, then maybe, maybe, maybe he can be decent for us as a super sub. Maybe. He could be, yeah. But the maybe. reason I fight Dan James Connor, bear in mind, yeah, right? I don't like Dan James. He yeah. frustrated me so many times for Wales, right? He annoyed the hell out of me. Yeah. But the one reason I fight his corner against Vermeer yeah, James can use both feet and he's actually in it, he can actually score a goal. Mm. He rarely does, so mm. he's pretty much like Verma in that sense, but if he has a chance, he's got. I think he'll have a better conversion rate than Verma does, and that's the only difference that I see is the fact that he can use both feet and he can actually score a goal. Whereas yeah. Verma's shooting ability is so bad. Yeah. Oh, lad. And plus, Dan James is an arrogant muppet. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> so maybe he doesn't like him. Yeah, the yeah. Room. I think Ian, so. Yeah. He's. Ian, what he's, shirt number are you having next week when you're you're putting on the shirt? You're going left wing. <laughs> I played centre half. <laughs> You're playing left wing next week, mate. You're playing left wing. My you, if I was playing for Ange, I probably would be, wouldn't I? <laughs> Bring back Andy yes. Sinton. Bring back Andy Sinton. Was it three goals or five goals he scored? In his in his no. career. Oh, our new kit. Sorry, yeah. Our new kit's lovely, by the way. None of this, none of this, you know what I mean? Different colours and changing flags and everything. Ours looks pucker. Yeah. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Well, I buy wish a Welsh you luck. Shirt, everyone. Screw the English shirt, buy a Welsh one. <laughs> I'm converting nope. you all. I hope you do the Polish and then I hope you, uh, you'll you beat probably Ukraine in the final, won't it be? No, no, Polish. Poland's the final. Don't you dare. Oh, it's Poland the final. My man, Andy Poland, Sinton. Poland's the final. Yeah, if we beat Poland, we qualify for your there we go. But then what's the other one? Ukraine, Iceland. They're, that's, that's pretty right. much the same free, thing. We're separate. Free spots. There's yeah. free spots to get free. Okay. Yes, yeah, so if we beat Poland, fingers crossed. Ginger Pele. Love him. But yeah. Ginger Pele. But yeah, if we beat Poland, we go through to Euros and fingers crossed right. we do. But we're looking I good. Hope looking I good. hope you do. Absolutely. The Welsh always bring that laughter. If Wales go for him getting a Welsh bucket hat. Because yeah. in England, it's Welsh, 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 hey, the Welsh shirts are cheaper as well, by the way, everyone. Welsh shirt, no, no is hundred not pound. They won't cost you a week's wages. It's all good. We're all supporting Wales. Tottenham on yeah. tour is now officially Welsh. <laughs> it's the Welsh Canadian divide. Jose yes. Dominguez, what a guy! <laughs> what a guy! I would rather support Arsenal. <laughs> Oh, that's it. Me and you've got on, James. Hey, 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 Me and you James, James, you wouldn't, would you? Come no, on. he wouldn't. James versus the road man. No, <laughs> James is having a laugh here. The road man versus flower. <laughs> uh, oh. 
I think Wales will definitely beat Poland. They're rubbish, yeah. I think Wales will get through that game. Uh, are Wales in our group? They go through. I possibly aren't they? Are they in our group? No, no, it's... no, no. I don't think so. Is it? Uh, who have we got? No idea. Apparently no. Apparently no. no. <laughs> what has this club come to? Arguing whether to have Timo Werner or Dan <laughs> James. Neither. We should be looking higher. Agreed. But that's what we're going for. Uh, <laughs> that's what we're left to argue about. <laughs> uh, cage right, cage right. Yeah. Morning, lads. Good to see you, Robbie. Good to see you. Who's in our group? That's how little I care. Absolutely. Um, well, I don't think we've got the time to answer this question, Tony, but we can put this on to another a question. Um, but basically, we answer this question every week on Tottenham on Tour. Um, we have my money's on the road, man. The road man has got a vote. I'm a soft guy. No chance. He's a plumber, isn't he, James? I'm a soft guy. No. <laughs> Belgium, <laughs> Slovakia, and Romania. Apparently, that's our group. Serbia is in the England group. What a, a poor set of games. Yep. Ah, oh, oh, bloody hell. Well, at least, at least we can laugh at ourselves, eh, guys? It's all you can do, isn't it? If you don't it's laugh. You're going to cry. I'm joking, but signing Tino is a new low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have had people like Raziak and Andy Booth, haven't we? Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's not quite that level. I'd rather support a country who qualifies rather than the qualifiers. So, eh. Oh, well. Roadman all day. Oh, they're getting support. The roadman is apparently a, a beast. Nah, uh, mate, I'm a teddy bear, me. <laughs> Unless I'm driving, then I'm out well angry, but that's because I can zoom away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Timo Werner or Dan James like asking, do you want a kick in the balls or a foot up the arse? <laughs> 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 Kevin Scott. Kevin Scott. Another one, another blinding player. Yeah. Before, we... before we start wrapping up, I want everyone to say the worst ever Tottenham player and be nice to Bill. Don't say Timothy Atiba. <laughs> so I'm mad at you. Who is the worst ever Tottenham player you've ever seen, um, um, David? I mean, there is a long list, isn't there, really? I don't know. Um, I can't pick one. There's been so many, honestly. <laughs> I really can't. I mean, I just don't know. I'm sorry, I can't give an answer. There's just too bloody many. <laughs> wow. Ian, who is the worst ever Tottenham player you've ever seen? Gregor Raziak. Mm. Yeah, good shout. It's a good shout. shout. Amir, who is the worst Tottenham player you've ever seen? Listen, for me, it has to be your man, Helder Postiga. The guy Ooh. couldn't hit a barn Oh, at Spurs. Oh, my. I yeah, think he yeah. only, I think he's a striker that only ever hit the post. Yeah. <laughs> Except when he needed to score against England. Then he and scored. then, yeah, then he buries it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say someone very controversial because people absolutely adore him. I'm going to say Lewis Holtby. Lewis Holtby oh. was atrocious. Ah, he weren't that bad. Not as bad as Razzie. He's sort of Fulham, you know, Ben. I know I was there. He scored a banger against Fulham. But he yeah. was dreadful. Oh, he was a passion merchant. He was the originator of the passion merchant. He cared and he cared and he cared and he ran his ass off. But he was awful. Let's see what people in the chat are saying. Kevin Scott, Gregor's Raziak, Ricardo Rocha, Rocha, Ricardo yeah. Rocha Ramon Vega. <laughs> Timo Werner is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Milinko Asimovic. Asimovic. Alton Felwell. Oh, God. Bongani Kamalo. <laughs> Zeki Pryas. Uh, Stuart Nevercott or Anthony Gardner. <laughs> no, you can't. Watch, watch Johnson. Watch Johnson. <laughs> you <laughs> little troll, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Adebayor with his ball being sent around. Uh, I'll tell you uh, what, though. Not a player I'd, I'd say is the worst, but one who scared the life out of me was a defender. 
Vlad Kirikas. Oh, God, he was dreadful. He was scary. He also scored in that Fulham game where Lewis Holtby scored. Yeah. He scored a banger. That's why, he, that's why I remember him. He did one... I remember once he did a better skill, man. I swear down, I think I had about 30 heart attacks. Yeah. But <laughs> he, he, was, he was a scary player, him, like. Andy oh. Booth, George, Kevin and Kudu. Oh, God. Gelson Clinton Fernandes. NG. Clinton NG. <laughs> Paolo Tramazzani. Do you know what I mean? When they said it was hard to pick, look how many separate ones there is. Mido, Embalalo, Mabuzela, Sergei <laughs> Rebrov. We bought some blinders over the years. Yeah. We? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. One of my favourites, Mauricio Tarico. Absolute <laughs> music. Oh, the list goes on and on. But on that note, we are going to end the show there. It's been a really fun one. It's been a good conversation. We've had a good, we've had a good chat. What about best ever players to finish the uh, the show? Oh, okay, bit? we'll do best ever players yeah. we've seen. Uh, best, there's only best ever players to round round us off. To say there is a bit of hope there, even in, in the hopelessness. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to say Harry Kane because it's just the obvious answer. Actually, no, I'm going to say my favourite. I'm going to say Ledley King because I've got a pic- I've got a picture of him right here. I'll give it to Ledley. I'll give it to Ledley. David, I've got a couple. So uh, obviously one, Glenn Hoddle. Yeah, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, yeah, good old Cliff, because me Welsh. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Back in the day, Cliff, and obviously recently it's got to be Kane, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got to be Kane or Bale. Bale as well. I thought he was great. But he didn't spend well. that long with us, to be fair. So I'm going to go with Kane. Yeah, Ian, Glenn Hoddle. Yeah. Me. James thinks his favourite ever players are Anthony Gardner and Timo Werner. <laughs> Stop flip flopping, James. <laughs> From here to round, round us off, to round us off. So I'll go with someone nobody said because I would say Bale as well because in terms of what I've seen, you know, the ba- Bale was probably you know, top quality. Um, but I have to say, from my childhood when I used to go to the lane, it, it was David Ginola. The yeah. guy could just oh. produce magic. Magic, yeah. you know, and we didn't have him for that long. That was the only yeah. thing. Um, but another little favorite yeah. of mine, he deserves a mention, is uh, Raphael van der Vaart. What, a player. Oh. what a player! If you wanted a player for a derby, van der Vaart was just oh, oh, a passion, all day long. yeah, all day long. Oh, on Unreal. that note, guys, thank you all so much for watching today's show. Cockroo Doodle But Do will be back next Monday at 9 a.m. the usual time with all your usual delinquents. And, Go- no, and Ben, no one's weekend is going to be ruined, is it? This Yay! time. Thank you all so much for watching today's show. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, if yes, so now what the cough is brewing. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao for now.